We all know we should be eating more fish, but if you're just starting out cooking, it can be really daunting. But it doesn't have to be. There are so many great foolproof ways to cook fish. We're gonna show you a few ways to cook fish so that you can incorporate it into your diet and never get bored. The first method we're going to show you is baking fish. It's probably the easiest way to cook fish. It's foolproof. You could just do it with salt and pepper, but adding a marinade is just a way to impart more flavor, so it's a little more exciting. So I'm gonna make a really easy, quick marinade with garlic, some Fresno chilies, soy sauce, and a little balsamic. So you can really get creative with your marinades. The most important thing is to make sure you have a balance of sweet, salty, and acidic, but you can use whatever combination you like. I'd recommend you marinate fish for at least 30 minutes, but not over an hour and a half. If you marinate your fish too long, the acid will actually start cooking the fish, and then you're gonna have this rough, rubbery fish. No one wants that. If you're short on time, you can do it for five or 10 minutes to still get some of that flavor. Once you're done marinating your fish, you wanna transfer it to a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Bake at 400 degrees for 12 to 14 minutes, depending on how well done you want your fish cooked. 12 minutes will be more rare, 14 minutes will be more medium rare. If you go past 16 minutes, it'll be a mess. Well done or overcooked fish will be dry, it won't be as tender. You're really missing the point of fish. You'll know when your salmon is cooked through, when you can take a tiny piece off the end and it flakes off beautifully, and the center is still a warm pink. You can add veggies to your baking sheet and make your dinner at once. Baking's great for a weeknight dinner. Now that you've learned how to bake your fish properly, here are two different ways to cook fish in a pan. First up is pan frying. This is a really easy technique that you can use with any light white fish, like tilapia, flounder, in our case, sole. First, you're going to salt and pepper both sides of the sole. Next, we're gonna dredge the fish in flour. You just wanna make sure there's a light coating, and then shake off any excess, and then we'll move on to the next step. You're gonna heat a pan over high heat, and once you can feel it getting really hot, add a few tablespoons of butter. Once the butter starts to brown, it should look golden brown. That's when you add the fish. White fish cooks really fast. It should be only a minute and a half per side. When the fish becomes opaque and the edges start to lift off the pan, that's your sign to flip it. And then you can add lemons for some extra flavor, or you can just leave it as is. Flour dredging is great because it protects the skin from burning, and it gives you a really light, crisp crust. So that's a really easy technique for basic whitefish. If you want to get a little fancier, you can use the same techniques with something like a tuna steak. With searing, this is your moment to really splurge on high-quality fish. Sushi-grade fish is great for searing because you'll still have that rare interior while getting a beautiful crust. So we're gonna keep the tuna steak super simple. First, you brush it with olive oil on all sides, then just sprinkle it with salt and pepper. For searing, you're gonna wanna use a stainless steel or a cast iron pan. They can handle higher heat, and you're gonna get a better crust on the bottom. Preheat the pan over high heat. Once it begins to get really hot, you can add the tuna. You don't need to add any more oil since it's already on the fish. For tuna, you wanna cook it for about two and a half minutes per side. The sides of the fish should be opaque and the inside should be pink. Once the sides are completely opaque, remove it from the heat and let it rest for five to 10 minutes. Searing is great for deeply colored, oily, flavorful, high quality fish. You can really let the flavor of the fish stand out with searing. Pan frying and searing is a bit more advanced, but it's a great way to get more of a variety of texture and great flavor out of your fish. Next up, poaching. Poaching fish gets a bad rep for being super boring, but it doesn't have to be. Here's an easy way to make a really flavorful poached fish. The joy of poaching is that it's super easy. You fill a pot with water and then you can add basically whatever you want. We're gonna add leeks, dill, lemon juice, and salt. You could add other alliums, you could add spices, it's really up to you. The important thing is just make sure you have some kind of acid and salt. Once you've got all that in your pot, then add the fish, then we're gonna turn the heat on. Poaching is great for fish that are really flavorful on their own, like salmon, arctic char, and halibut. For a deep poach, you generally want to bring the heat up between 140 degrees to 180 degrees. We're gonna poach at 160 degrees, which is a good middle point. Once the water is at 106 degrees, that's when you set your timer. We're gonna set it for about 12 minutes or until the fish turns opaque. This depends on the size of your fish, so just make sure to keep an eye on it. You wanna make sure the temperature doesn't get too hot, otherwise the fish could break apart and you're gonna have a really rough, overcooked texture. The joy of poaching is that you can do it with water, you can do it with wine, or you can even do it with olive oil. Poaching doesn't have to be boring and it's really easy. It's another great weeknight option. So now that you've learned a healthy way to cook fish, we're gonna talk about an unhealthy one, frying. Frying's great, but it's probably not something you wanna do by yourself on a weeknight. 
It's more labor intensive and it's more messy than the other techniques we went over. But it's really delicious and it's really fun if you have a big group of people over. We're gonna show you an easy recipe for how to make beer battered cod. So first I'm gonna cut the fish into two inch pieces. Once we're done with that, we can move on to the batter. When frying fish, you wanna use a mild white fish like cod, catfish, or flounder. Mild fish is ideal because the frying imparts a ton of flavor. For this batter, I'm gonna use flour, Old Bay, chili powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. You whisk it together, add a beaten egg, and then add a beer of your choice. This is a fairly standard recipe for beer battered fish, but you can really play around with other spices that you like. You wanna make sure the batter isn't too wet and loose. You also wanna make sure that there are no lumps. It should be slightly thick and smooth. So next, we're gonna dip the cut pieces of fish into the batter. We're gonna make sure they're evenly coated on all sides. Once you're done with that, it's time to fry. When you're frying, you wanna make sure to use a neutral oil like canola, vegetable, or peanut oil because it doesn't impart any other flavors onto the fish. We're going to fry these at 350 degrees for two to three minutes or until it becomes golden brown. Make sure you do this in batches so you don't overcrowd the pot. Otherwise, it'll bring the temperature down and the fish won't cook properly. Once you're done frying, transfer it to a wire rack so that all the grease can drip off. While the fish is still hot, make sure to give it a good sprinkle of salt so that it really sets in. Let's be real, who doesn't love fried fish? It's something you'd wanna do for parties, if you're trying to show off. For even more tips on frying, check out our other video on how to fry everything. Cooking fish can seem intimidating, but as you can see, it doesn't have to be. It's actually pretty simple. Now that you know these five techniques, give them a spin and see which one's your favorite. Get the flavor however you want, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that one's the keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. It's been a long day.